Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In my previous video, I showed you my progress on creating a weekly claims algorithm so we can trade the news. In that video, I told you guys that I would be using the SPY ETF, but I ran into some issues with using pre-market quotes. I enabled and purchased some, some data feeds from interactive brokers, but I wasn't able to get real-time pre-market data for that ETF. So instead, what I'll be doing is using the E-mini S&P. But in this video, I wanted to show you guys the contract moves between the news release and the opening bell. In this tutorial, I'll be focusing on Thursday contract data, and that's a minute data for the E-mini S&P between the times of 8.30 to 9.30 Eastern time. And what I'll be doing in the script is measuring the moves between the news release and the opening bell. So essentially, I want to trade the news and then just get out before the opening bell. So I'll go ahead and provide the data for the E-mini S&P on Thursdays. So all I'm going to do is just read in the data. Since this is minute data, I'm just going to extract the dates. So I'm going to trim off the times and I'm going to extract Thursdays only. All right, so for the days, I'm just going to pass in the unique days as a list. And I created a function here so we can use L apply. So I'll be subsetting by date. I'm going to trim each of the Thursdays between this time frame. I'm going to extract the opening price at 8.30 a.m. And then I'll be comparing that to 5 minutes later, 10 minutes later, 15 minutes later, and 60 minutes later, which is the opening bell. So essentially, I want to sell beforehand. But I can't use percentage returns since these are futures contracts. Instead, what I'll be doing is extracting the point difference. And I'm also going to extract the maximum price between that time frame, the minimum price, and the range. I'll be combining the point difference for each time frame and I'm gonna return everything as a data frame. So that's all that this is doing here. I'm gonna go ahead and run this. It doesn't take that long. After that's done running, I'm gonna combine everything and return it into this variable called BT for backtest. I'm gonna convert all the columns to numeric columns. We'll take a look at that. All right, so we have 50 entries and all these dates should be Thursdays. And for each column, shows you the point difference for each time frame. So for the very first column called CL05, on this date, the point difference between the opening price at 8.30 a.m. and five minutes later was 3.75, only three after 10 minutes, 3.75 after 15, and then we actually lost 6.75 if we would have waited until the opening bell. I also have the point difference to the maximum so if we would have sold at the very top, that would have been four and a half points. And to the minimum, we would have actually lost 10 S&P points. All right, let's go to the next step. So I'm going to convert that data frame into an XTS object. And then I'm going to read in the weekly claims. And I will go ahead and provide that as a CSV file as well. So if we read that in, I'm going to turn it into a data frame. And we'll go ahead and take a look at that data frame. So here we have the initial claims for each week. I'm gonna go ahead and format this data frame. I'm gonna replace these commas with empty spaces and I'm gonna go ahead and trim out the Ks in order for us to turn this into a numeric variable. So let's go ahead and do that. So here I'm gonna replace the commas with empty spaces. I'm gonna remove all the Ks. And then I'll convert everything into numerical variables. So we take a look at IC again. Now the data is more accessible in R. All right, so let's go to the next step. I'm gonna convert that data frame into an XTS object. I'm gonna create a column for the signal. So for the signal, if the actual initial claim was higher than the forecasted, then I'm gonna place a negative one for the signal. Otherwise, I'll place a one. So the negative one will be bearish and the positive one will be bullish. So we'll go ahead and run that. And then I'll go ahead and combine my point differences for this contract along with the initial claims data into this variable called df. So we take a look at df. So it looks like I don't have data for a couple of weeks. I'll go ahead and remove these cases from this data set. And I'm going to do that by using na omit. So if we take a look at df again, now we have complete cases. All right, let's go back to our script. I'm going to plot the ranges for the negative and positive signals by using ggplot. So I'll go ahead and show you guys that. All right, so here are the ranges for the negative signal and the positive signal. So we see that for the negative signal, our ranges are from 116 all the way to 11 points. 
And again, the ranges are the minimum to the maximum between the specific time frame I chose. And on the positive side, we have ranges from about 44 points down to only 5.75. But then again, this is 2020, so of course we're gonna have a lot more volatility, but this is a great way to see the actual ranges when we do have a lot of volatility. So I'll go ahead and close that. All right, I'm gonna group bearish signals and bullish signals. I'm gonna run that. So I'll go ahead and show you the quantiles for the bearish and bullish cases for each of the time frames. So let's do the bearish cases first. So all of these are the quantiles for each of the time intervals. And I wanna focus at the 50% level and we see that all of these are actually negative, which is a bad thing since we are multiplying the point differences by our signal and our bearish signal are always negative one. So we're actually losing at the 50% level. Not much, but it is a loss. So we'll do the same thing, but for the bullish signals. Here, I'll print these out. All right, so at the 50% level, we see that the shorter time frames might work a little bit better. So what I'll be doing for this algorithm is I'm actually going to be sending orders using the ranges. So for the minimum, at the 50% level is negative seven, almost seven and a half. And to the maximum, we get 6.37, so almost six and a half. And I'm actually going to try and hit five S&P points to the upside and negative five on the downside. And I'll be using that for my exits. So I'll take profits at negative five if I'm shorting and positive five if I'm long. But this concludes the video, guys. I just wanted to show you my thesis on working with this weekly claims algo that I'll be finalizing by next week. So stay tuned. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.